are here today to remember and honor a great pace setter and icon of African football. We are here to recall the enormous contributions he made to nurture some of the biggest names in Ghana and the African football landscape. We recollect his kindness, his modesty, his intellect, his unbendable commitment to the growth and development of football in Africa. He was an outstanding footballer who became an astute administrator because of his vision, integrity, and commitment to the game. He was a trailblazer who put the interests of young footballers above his own and put their well-being before his own. He was the innovator who truly was worthy of the title, the pioneer of young footballers in Africa. As we gather here, we recall with great anguish and sorrow the day he passed away, and note his commitment to the game to his last day, because his life ended on the football pitch. It is fitting that as we celebrate the contribution of Alaji Ibrahim Slaytete to football, we recollect the task that we must all undertake to make African football the best in the world. Ladies and gentlemen, to deliver a lecture in, member, in remembrance and commemoration of the late Alaji Slaytete is no mean an honor. That is why I took the offer with utmost pride and great pleasure. I'm indeed humbled. But who is Alagis Letete? He's well known to many of us here, but for the benefit of the few who may not know so much about him, he was born in Accra in April 1957 and had his primary education in Osu, also in Accra. But his desire to play football took him to the Eastern Region where he played for Juantes Football Club, then owned by a company called Juantex Textiles Limited. He excelled at the club level, which resulted in his call-up to the national soccer team, then for school-going uh, boys called the Academicals. His desire to combine education and football took him to Sekendi, where he enrolled at the Takradi Polytechnic and signed for the local club side called Sekendi Hazakis. Alagis Laitete was tall, lanky, and a stylish footballer. He was a midfielder who played together with Emmanuel Kwashi. Kwashi was captain of the 1982 African, uh, the Ghana winning squad for the African Cup of Nations in Libya. And for those of you in Egypt, Kwashi's name is synonymous with Zamalek, the arch rival of your club, uh, Hani. <laughs> he played alongside players like Francis Ezi, Enoch Kumsin, George Brown, Paul Annan, and Justice Aban, just to mention a few. Slaitete was a member of the Hazakes team, Sekendi Hazakes team, that won the Wafu club championship. He returned to Ghana in the 1990s and played briefly for the Gold Stars before venturing into football management. Indeed, Slaitete did so much for Ghana football and beyond Ghana and Africa. And world football shall forever be grateful for the seeds that he has sown, which continue to bear fruits. The accomplishments and achievements of Alaji, as we commonly call him, can be seen and valued the more when we just oppose it against the demands of modern football administration. Modern football requires grassroots investment, and that is what he did, he exactly did. It requires a visionary leader, one who has a dream and a strategy, ready to teach, to leave a legacy, to lead and leave a legacy, able and willing to take risks, go into long-term investments, and these were the qualities Alaji demonstrated, and Mr. Anson, amply bore testimony to that. As a human being, he was affable. He spent his entire adult life serving football in Ghana, Africa, and the world at large. His handiwork spanned the whole spectrum of football, from juvenile football, tough life, Premier League, national teams, coaching, refereeing, sports administrators, and many more. 
This was the man whose candles and lights continued to burn and shine. The exploits of Slaitete in juvenile football led to the unearthing of raw talents from all corners of the country. True Liberty babies in Accra with branches in Sunyani and Tamale, other parts of the country. He spent a lot of time traveling across the length of breadth of Ghana to spot on earth and polish raw football talents. Alaji did not only stop in Ghana, he extended his special skills in sporting talents to the rest of Africa by establishing academies in Togo, in Kenya, and Sierra Leone, and Mrs. Johansen will bear testimony to that, which have helped to boost the pool of talents in this country. Some of the players, he nurtured that these academies have grown to represent their countries at international competitions. In May 2011, Nine of the members of the victorious Togo national football team at the Wafu football tournament held in Nigeria, in Abiokuta in particular, I was, I was privileged to witness the finals. Nine of them, including Atakra Lalewale, the best player of the tournament, came from the Liberty Academy in Togo. The current national football team coaches of Togo and Kenya also came from Liberty Academy set up in those countries. And Sierra Leone, we recently loaned you Slaitete, also a product of the Liberty. <laughs> Slaitete's role in the emergence of Liberty Professionals Football Club as a force in the Ghana Premier League is therefore all to see. Liberty Professionals Football Club burst onto the scene of Ghana Premier League and won the administration of many a football fan. They tantalized and dazzled the football public with their beautiful, sweet, flowing entertaining and tactical style of play, which earned them the accolade, the scientific soccer lads, among others. Aside their successes on the field of play, Liberty professionals gave real meaning to professionalism in football by developing the necessary infrastructure to support the club's campaign in the league. Since coming into Ghana's top flight league, they have never been relegated. Through Liberty Professionals Football Club, Slaitete developed several generations of players who contributed towards the successes of our national teams. Starting from the national under 17, under 20, under 23, and indeed the senior national team, the Black Stars. His development of players contributed to Ghana's contribution, Ghana's qualification and participation in the 2006 FIFA World Cup in Germany and the 2010 FIFA World Cup in South Africa. Notable amongst those players are Mike Lesian, Sule Muntari, Asamwajan, Derek Watin, John Pinto, Kojo Asamwa, Daniel Ajay, and Emmanuel Papu. Sly stood tall on the list of personalities who made contributions to the development of football in Ghana. He was a mentor and a role model to several players, referees, coaches, and football administrators, including yours truly. He was an advisor to the GFA, he was a power broker, he was a peacemaker, and he was a unifier. Personally, when I decided to contest for a position on the CAF Executive Committee in 2011, it was Sly who virtually held my hand and took me through the custom and rudiments of uh, contesting elections in, in, in CAF. He took me to all the power brokers in town, from Amadou Diakite in Mali, General Meme in Togo, who we travel all along to meet them. And these trips were financed from his own pocket. He took me to, yeah. So when he died and some of us shed tears uncontrollably, and unceasingly, people didn't understand. Mr. Anson, I don't want to be infected by your uh, tear shedding uh, moments. They are too emotional. Please cheer up. I don't want to shed tears this evening. Otherwise, this whole thing will spoil. <laughs> Slightete was quite unassuming and above all very intelligent. He was respected by all who came into contact with him. He showed respect to all, regardless of one's age, gender, social, or economic circumstances. Due to his coyness, he refused appointments to all frontline positions at the GFA. He preferred to serve his beloved country as a backbencher, and he did that par excellence. 
Sly's influence and contributions to the development of football transcended the boundaries of Ghana. He made a huge impact on African football by serving as a member of the marketing and sponsorship committee of WAFU. He also served as a member of the Futsal and Beach Soccer Committee of CAF. His sudden demise was a big and huge loss to the football family in Africa, and we still have not been able to recover till date, but we continue to nurture and develop what he started and built on. In recognition of his invaluable support to the development of football, in 2008, the government of Ghana bestowed on him a state honor. Further honors were conferred on him in 2010 and 2011 by the Ghana Football Association and the Professional League Board, respectively, for his meritorious services to the development of football in Ghana. The vision and legacy of Slaitete, premise and fundamentally, was on youth football development, which falls in line with and has perfectly dovetailed into the GFA technical program. But take note that the technical director of the Ghana Football Association was also a disciple or an apostle of Slaitete. And so the football, the youth development policy of the GFA, which was crafted by a team of technocrats headed by uh, Coach Otiak Tente, had a direct input of the vision of Slaitete into youth football. Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, please indulge me in presenting to you the youth development fr uh, framework of the GFA. It's very detailed. I will not want to go into it, but at the right time, we will look at issues like the youth development in Ghana. We call it the elite football uh, program, talent development and promotion, which is based on commitment and passion, strategic planning, which is the framework, the legacy, and the vision and exploit of Alaji, which has now uh, dovetailed into the foundation and vision of football in our country for years to come. That is why our strategic plans have been designed with the efficacy and all encompassing factors and variables to ensure realistic targets and achievements. Our coaching courses have, been, have enabled many grassroots persons to be equipped with coaching expertise, especially at the grassroots level and well beyond. A number of coaches have been trained and registered and are currently attached to national teams, clubs and schools at various levels of football in our country. Clubs are being encouraged to place emphasis on youth teams, and that is why the FA is leaving no stone on time to start a serious nature and development from the grassroots level. And I like this to show the way, and it has shown to be possible. The leadership of the current FA has consistently been in collaboration with the GS in pursuance of our policy of combining education and football, and this has manifested itself at various levels of inter-schools and inter-regional uh, sports festivals across the country. And the aim is to identify talent, build a youth database at every level for proper monitoring and transition of players for placement. This is to build upon the path that Alaji has carved and shown. We have also collaborated with the Ghana University Sports Association in identifying youth talent for the youth national teams and club size. The exceptional relationship between the FA and the university is worth mentioning as all our, all, as our efforts, uh, as efforts are made in identifying and nurturing talents and also providing capacity building and development. As we reflect on the life and contributions of Elijah Slatete, we need to constantly ask ourselves what it is that we must do to build on this legacy to make Ghana and African football better. We need to draw from Slaitete's lessons that commitment and dedication to youth football will bring the desired results of churning our world-class players resulting in title successes, professionalism, and excellence in football administration. He was honest and very hardworking. The best tribute we can pay him is to uphold the principles that characterize his life. Mr. Chairman, I can go on and on because it is clear from all to see where we have come from where we are, and most especially, what individuals and partnerships can do to promote football and sports in the country. Football and sports are no more than, no more the domain of governance and associations, but rather an undertaking that calls for a strong partnership, coherence and strategy, and above all, courageous, visionary, selfless leadership and entrepreneurship, as shown by Alagis Lateti. 
Alaji Slaitete, may your soul rest in peace. May Allah bestow on you all the mercies and give you heaven. Rest in peace. Thank you very much for your kind attention. And may God bless all of you.